Welcome to the Mother Together podcast. This is Tiana. This is Arielle. And we're two moms empowering other mamas not to settle in their motherhood, relationships, careers, and self-worth. We have someone really special on with us this week, and we are so excited for you guys to hear from him because he's who has helped us uh, this past year get to where we are now. And honestly, I, I, I know that we would not be where we are right now without the help that he's given us and, and the coaching he's given us and primarily with mindset. Like it's not something that Tiana and I were very well versed in and we had been self-employed virtual assistants for, you know, five to eight years between the two of us. We never really got into that mindset shift, I guess. And we, we still just weren't on that level. And so he really took us there. And I'm, I'm just so excited for you guys to hear from him and share in his wisdom so that you guys can hopefully take some of the things that we learn from and, and run with it. So Apoorva, I'll let you introduce yourself. I'm excited to hear what you have for everybody. Thanks for having me on, guys. I really appreciate it. So I'm just going to give you guys like a quick backstory and it ties into mindset. So I grew up in Silicon Valley, kind of saw... You know, my parents, family, friends, kind of everybody popping bottles of champagne for IPOs, getting really wealthy overnight. Um, and so I was like, I got to be an entrepreneur. And so I went to college for it, learned pretty quickly. I'm not going to learn from a book or a professor. So I left and I joined this mobile app company and we grew them from 300K a year to about 10 million a year within the course of a year. And I was lucky enough, fortunate enough to work closely with the CEO at the time who his mindset was next level. Like there was a period where we had $40 left in the bank. And he rallied everybody together in the room and was like, hey, we're going to bring 100,000 users into our app this month. And we're like, we have 4,000 right now. Like, what are you talking about? He's like, we're going to do it. And he talked to every single person and convinced everybody it was going to happen. And that next month, we made a million and a half just that month. And we blew up like viral internationally. It was crazy. And that was all mindset based. And so that was, that kind of snowballed my career. I realized how quickly things can change if you really believe in a compelling future. And so for I, Ran a 3D printing company as a CEO, had a venture capital for a bit, grew a couple of agencies, and now I run a startup accelerator. So we help startups in Silicon Valley launch new products, scale to a million a year and scale to 10 million a year. And there's even some that are like already doing eight figures that are adding um, millions remotely. So that's what I do right now. It's a little bit about me. So tell us what you thought whenever we reached out to you and said that we were starting a company called Laptop and Littles and wondered if you would have a quick call with us to give us any tips. Yeah, I mean, I was intrigued. Tiana and I worked together years ago, um, pretty closely. Tiana was my VA at the time. And so I always liked her. I think she's like, you know, I hate to other VAs that I've had, but probably my favorite VA um, that I've had. And so when she was you like, You better yeah. say that. <laughs> <laughs> and so when she was like, hey, I want to launch this course and help other VAs like grow at the time, like, I remember she got a really good job offer at the time. Do you remember this, Tiana? Like really good, probably with one. Did. I was really hesitant. Like it took me a lot to make that decision. And then, so she's like, I'm saying no to that. I'm doubling down on my dream. This is my dream. I'm like, oh no, is she a dreamer or is she someone that gets stuff done? And then I was like, of course, she's someone that gets stuff done. And so when you guys reached out to me, I was like, yeah, this is great. And you came on. And then we, we did this like reverse engineering process. So that way, like we say, hey, what's your goal? How are you going to get there? And that's what I do with everybody. And I had no intention of even coaching you guys. I was just like, I want to help you out. And then you guys were like, yeah, um, over the next year, can we make like $10,000? And I was like, oh, the, in my head, I'm like, no one is ever going to make, put a lot of effort into something for $10,000. So I pushed you guys a little bit. And I think we ended up saying 150 and then it became like, 480 and then you guys were like after that call you guys were like hey we're diving into this and so that was kind of my first foray with you guys in the mindset yeah we we definitely shot really really low um I mean we were just like happy just to have like you know a little money coming in from a course we created like we had no idea what like where it could actually take us I think you also put into perspective what all was involved in coaching too, because that's not something we'd done on that level. And so you were like, you're going to be giving a lot of your time to these women. So, you know, don't sell yourself short. And I think that's a huge mindset shift too, just in general, like not even in business or anything, but just knowing your worth and not because you know someone saying like, oh, I'll do this for free just because I know you or whatever. 
And yeah, that was really powerful for me. And something that I had to remind myself too, like, this is all the value that we're giving all the time, you know? That's awesome. I'm glad, I'm glad you know that you have to keep reminding yourself too. That's a big part of just being successful is like, you have to condition yourself to a reality that doesn't exist right now. And then you got to condition the people around you to the reality. And then you can tell when someone's kind of slacking when they're like, oh, why do I have to keep doing this to myself and this other person or these other people in my life? That's actually the dream. So can you share some times when you felt like we came to our coaching calls and we were slacking? <laughs> I'm going to just throw us under the bus on this one. <laughs> I remember very clearly there was one and I remember exactly where I was sitting when this happened and we got on this call and both of you were like a poor of everything you tell us to do is not working. Aren't you guys making money now? And you guys like, yeah, but it's not working. You keep telling us stuff to do and it's not working. And uh, you were really upset that there was a specific tool that I was like, you guys should try this out. And it was like 50 bucks a month. We're like, we're losing 50 bucks a month. And I was like, oh, okay. We got to reset the mindset. At that point, there's like two ways to play it, right? One is, hey, you're wrong, which is never going to work because everybody's going to get defensive. The other one is like, what's actually going on? And so there's three things that, that are going to happen when you're dealing with mindset, right? One is, do, does someone have a compelling future? Is there a future that's out there that they believe is so important to have that they're going to do anything and everything to get there, right? So we had to check and say, hey, is that still true for you guys? And that had kind of fallen away a little bit you're like is this something we really want to get into so first we set that next is whenever someone's like struggling with something working or making something happen they're doubting one of three things they're either doubting themselves they're doubting the process or they're doubting the person that they're kind of working through with. and so in that moment i knew you guys were doubting yourself i don't know what it was i just kind of saw it and i was like okay and literally i remember sitting there just going like hey like you know you can do this right like, you guys got this. And you guys were like, no, 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 but all this stuff, like, no, 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 you got this. And then you guys turn around. And it's happened a couple times where you guys will call me and I'll be like, okay, it's okay. What are you going to do next? Yeah, you are, you're really great at like flipping us because we're both like, we've gotten a lot better, um, but we were like, you know, we always seen the the glass half half empty. And so when it just starts getting a little rocky, like in business, which is like kind of like a normal part of like the wave, you know, you just ride the wave a little bit, we freak out. And so you have definitely like kept us like, okay, wait, like, do you want this? Like, can you do this? Like, are you capable of doing this? And once we answer those questions, we're like, yes, yes, we are. And then it just flips it. And so that's where I'm like, okay, mindset is so big. It, I mean, it's just a huge part of business. And I mean, it's a huge part of life, but especially when you are, you know, running a business. And consistency yeah. is such a big thing too, like you're saying, because that's the one thing that we did is after the first few calls with you and when you helped us with our mindset, we were like, okay, that's done. Let's move on to the next step, which is just building this company. We didn't think that we'd have to keep doing that, but essentially it was like, I mean, it really was just like therapy sessions with you, like the first 30 minutes or so. And I mean, if you do any type of therapy, you know, it's ongoing. I heard something a while ago that I really liked. There's a billion reasons in this world to be upset and there's a million reasons to be happy. And so it's your responsibility to focus on the reasons to be happy. And then productive, you can be productive after that. But you can also be upset and productive, but that's not, you usually don't create things of quality or families of quality or communities of quality when you're upset. Yeah. So what would you say to someone who is maybe new to even just like the self-employment world where who maybe has like a scarcity mindset because they're thinking, okay, my last job, I made 1500 a month and my bills came out to 1200. So I never had a lot left over or whatever. And then they're moving into the self-employment world, which, you know, isn't, it's a lot different because you have the flexibility, but you don't have the scalability of your income yet, but you're still like getting to make more money. How, like, what would you say to someone who is in that where they're almost having to leave behind that 1500 for a minute so that they can make 3,000 or 6,000 or whatever, but they have that moment of panic where it's like, well, maybe I'm safer with the 1,500 because there might be some months where I might not get quite to 3,000. What would I say to someone in that position? It takes a very specific type of circumstance to make you want to make a leap. And that circumstance either happens to you or you create it for yourself. Like your why? Like your why. Yeah, like your why. But like 
a really negative emotion is going to trigger that. Like something happens at work and you're like, I'm never going back to that boss. I will do anything and everything to not have to deal with that person again. Or you realize like, oh my God, five years from now, my kid's going to go to college. I don't have enough money in bank to be able to pay for that. What do I have to do right now to make sure that happens? There's going to be something, but you have to decide if you're going to let it happen to you or you actually take control. That's the first step in developing that mindset is what controls my life, me or life, me or my emotions, like me or my thoughts, me or my friends, my family, like who controls my life? And then what kind of life do I want to live? And you take a step and really create that and draw it out. And then how much does that cost? And am I being completely honest with myself and my ability to do so and my commitment to do so? And am I investing enough time and money into doing that? And you got to ask yourself these questions really like a lot, again and again, consistently. And then if you're taking the leap and you have this feeling of uncertainty, one, it's like it's totally normal because it's a little crazy to take the leap. That's totally fine for you to do. Um, but you got to ask yourself these three questions. And this is also what I did with you guys, John Mary, all again and again and again and again and again. And again. Because you have to. One, is it possible for you to get that future? Two, are you going to find a way to do it? And then three, is it worth it? And if you can answer all those three questions, then you got to ask yourself, like, is it going to be fun? And the truth is all four of those things are true, right? It's possible you're going to find the way. It's going to be worth it. You're going to have fun if you choose those things. You don't choose those things and it's tough. And it's not going to happen immediately, too. You've got to have patience. But the long term, it will. If you like. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that you had us ask our, ourselves those questions every single morning. <laughs> that was, I that mean, was the morning say, routine you built out for us. <laughs> yeah. Every single day. I mean, multiple times a day, are we asking those questions? Which is funny now because if you read a lot of my posts, I ask those questions in there now, like if you're struggling with like confidence, like ask yourself these questions, like, you know, is it, you know, possible to like be confident and like, mm -hmm. and I'm like, where did I get that from? And it's you. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to quote you every single time. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it's Not really anonymous. Funny. It's from a poor friend. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, so I, I probably did it with someone else too. I have no idea. I can't remember. Right? But yeah. what works, works. And so whatever works, you want to everybody else. Yeah, it's really crazy good. how much outside of out like out of your head it gets you because you know us growing up seeing people work really really hard like physical labor or putting in hours for money that they don't have control over how much they get. I don't know that ingrains in you just like a normalcy of how it's supposed to be. And so whenever you said like uh, taking that leap is crazy, like it is crazy, it hit me like it is crazy, but it's crazier to do it the other way around of like working a nine to five that literally kills you just to be able to maybe retire with like enough money to survive, you know, for the rest of your life. It's crazy. Like that's, what's crazy to me. And now I see that before I didn't. Yeah. I mean, so it didn't used to be crazy in our parents' generation because companies used to last for so long. They would take care of you. Yeah. They had these pension funds. Like you would be able to retire. They would pay for you. All these things were taken care of. Your benefits were good. The hours were good. The wages were good. In this new age where like companies are disappearing every 15, 20 years, mm -hmm. you don't get that stability, that constant, like it's just a different world. And it's scary to know that, but it's true. That's a really good way to think about it. That like why that, that normalcy is there. Like it did make sense at one point. Yeah. And, and these things have, have been flow, right? Sometimes there's really big companies to care of everybody. Sometimes it's a bunch of small companies where everybody has to work really hard. It's just the natural flow of things in civilization. So I have a question. What would you say to someone who is trying to shift from like the employee like mindset to a business? Like we said, we struggled with that, even though we had been self-employed for, you know, five years for me, Ariel was eight years, but it still was a huge shift for us. Yeah. I mean, the toughest thing there is like when you're an employee, you're taken care of. And then when you're a business owner, you have to take care of people. And so you got to ask yourself that question, like which group do you belong in? And which one are you willing to like become? Especially during the pandemic, there's been a lot of people I've been saying like, hey, no one's checking on me and no one's like, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, guys, like, you're either going to be checked in on or you're going to check in on people. But you got to pick which one you are. And then there's nothing wrong with either, but just pick which one you are. And that gets people to take that step. It's really your identity. So then let's say someone identifies with 
being able to check in on people and and have that role. What what type of things would you suggest that they do? Like coming from, you know, us, whenever we started a business, we didn't even know, like we knew business coaches were a thing. We just didn't think they were a thing in the place that we were, you know, we didn't think that was necessary, but obviously we realized how necessary it was. And so like, obviously like a business coach or some sort of support system, but like, what are some other things that they should just like get in their day-to-day outside of the, the mindset of, you know, what we just talked about? Yeah. Okay. So one is stare at your money every day like look at your bank account the more you hide from it the more discomfort you're going to have around money Um, that's really big i mean every day when you wake up you should look at your bank account and anytime you feel like oh i don't want to look look like that's when you got to look um two you should look at your net cash flow so you should see like is my cash going up every 30 days how much cash do you have in the bank and staying in the bank um and then three like start asking for help Wealthy people ask for help all the time. How they become wealthy is because they all help each other. And so you're now part of that category. So go out and ask for help. And so like getting a coach, like all these things are part of like getting help. Um, knowing where you are exactly, knowing where you want to go um, is really big. What time frame you do it in is really big. Um, and then knowing what happens if you don't take action is huge. Like what's the negative outcome of you doing it? So running through those things is really important. Um, Like literally on a daily basis. When you're being taken care of, you you probably don't have that much anxiety. When you're a business owner, you're gonna guarantee you're gonna have stress and anxiety for Mm -hmm. sure. So you need to be able to wash those things out. Mm -hmm. So one thing uh, to get rid of anxiety, it's been proven through like clinical psychology, have a big breakfast every day. Like not eat till you're full, like eat a little bit more than that. Mm-hmm. What happens is, and this is a little technical, but when you wake up, your cortisol is high. And that when that mixes with like a fasted state, your body can't physiologically handle it. So that's one. Um, two, have a routine of self-care. So you're going to be stressed out, totally normal. Don't worry about it. Fix it. It's very mm-hmm. a biochemical thing. So kind of work out or take long, nice baths or like something in your schedule to make sure that's taken care of. Um, those two are probably the biggest impediments outside of mindset to anything. Therapy is huge. Maybe mm-hmm. sign up for like there's a bunch of therapy apps that are super cheap now. Oh yeah. A couple bucks a month. But that's huge. Just having someone give you objective analysis on what's going on in your life outside of what's happening, like mm-hmm. what's happening within you. Um, that really, really helps. And then sifting through like what actually matters versus, versus what doesn't. Mm-hmm. So when you're an employee, you can get away with doing stuff that doesn't matter. When you're a business owner, like you want to affect change in the world, like in your own life and the people lives that you serve and help. Um, cutting out the stuff that doesn't matter really, really helps. Yeah, that's a that's a huge and that's a huge part of self care too. I think, and the first two things, eating breakfast and just self care in general. Like, yeah, though that's what I would tell like any mom starting out anyway. So. That's like, yeah. that's perfect. We have a lot of moms struggling with like investing in themselves. Well, okay. So did you guys invest in me or did you guys invest in yourselves? Yeah. I feel like our money went to you, but we're, we're investing right. in ourselves. Like we're investing in our, our business, our future. Yeah. So the issue with a lot of ambitious people is that they're not committed. And so they put all their money towards their ambition versus taking care of themselves. Mm-hmm. That's why I don't do self-care. That's why they don't eat breakfast. But that's why also they don't invest in things that are going to make them better because mm-hmm. they're like, no, 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 but I want the thing. Mm-hmm. So anything you, want and everything, you want the thing, you want it now. Yeah. yeah. And even everything you can do to, to make yourself fortified and better is really important. So a business coach is one of those things. Are there people that grow without business coaches? Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. But you can get there a lot faster with a business coach. You're going to have a lot less heartaches and mistakes. And like someone's going to be there being like, yeah, I know it sucks it's okay right Uh, sorry like that's it's really nice to have um and like investing in yourself is one of the keys to freedom fortunately unfortunately Mm -hmm. um that's one two whenever you're not hitting a goal consistently it's because you're not committed enough and you have to quantify that commitment so you're going to quantify the commitment with the amount of time you put into getting to the goal and then how much money you've invested. 
And so investing in coaches and tools and softwares and contracts and legal teams and all these things are showing yourself that you're committed to something. So the best people actually overpay for stuff. Like I pay my coaches extra. I pay my employees extra like because I'm really committed to their outcomes. Mm -hmm. The second you realize that, you'll start realizing that people will pay you extra too because they're paying you because of your commitment, not because of your output. Mm -hmm. That's really That's good. good. I remember you saying... Um the investment also, it motivates you because, and you basically just said that in other words, but when you're putting that money in, in that moment of doubt or setback or whatever that you do feel, because it's going to come, you're like, oh, I have $6,000 on this. So of course I'm going to keep going. I'm going to figure out a way to make it work instead of saying like, well, it was free or well, it was discounted or whatever. Then you, it's like, okay, easy to piece out. Yeah. No, it makes it real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It makes it real. Like if you're going to the pool, you're going to bring a towel, right? So like, if you're like, this is a weird analogy, but this is what I'm using now. Uh, <laughs> so if you're like leaving the house and you don't pick up the towel, you're probably not going to go to the pool. The mm -hmm. same thing is with, when you're investing in yourself. If you're going to build a whatever, 100,000, 500,000 million dollar empire. And you're like, oh, no, uh, I don't really need to invest. Like, do I really need to? You're probably not going to go there. Mm -hmm. like you're not committed to that yeah that's, yeah, that's so true that's so true with so many things yeah I was I think about like as if I buy something like I want to like I definitely want to make sure I use it get my money's worth but like you know if someone gives it to me you're like yeah you know I'm I might use that but like do I really need it but if I bought it you know I'd be like I'm using that like we're gonna get our money's worth out of it so and I feel yeah. like when you invest in something this is a weird example but for moms like if you think of like Okay, like, at a, you know, before you have a baby, you're like, you know, natural birth for most moms, like that's something they consider. <laughs> and if you don't like invest in a doula or like therapy or meditation or anything beforehand, once you get in there and you feel those contractions, more than likely you're going to be like, okay, just give me the epidural. Like that was me. I was like, I'll try for a natural birth, but I didn't do anything for the nine months leading up to it to like prepare me for it. But if you invest all that money into a doula and, you know, therapy and all that, you're probably going to be like, well... <laughs> I have to do it now, you know? That was good. I think there's probably people on the, the listening to this that are saying like, oh, it's easy for you guys to say, like you guys are like the successful people that like have the money and blah, blah, blah. But like, I think all of us on this call have invested money when we didn't have it. I've been up, I've been down. There's times where I had nothing and I would go out of my way to borrow money to make sure I invested in myself versus just saying like, I'm going to figure it out or just giving up. And that was really tough. So I, I empathize with whoever's feeling that like it's really really tough to do but it's never not paid off for me and we invested which is actually like last year last may i mean i literally was packing up my things leaving my husband i mean i left everything took my three kids stayed at ariel's for like four days and then got my own apartment and so like it was really scary to me because you know i had like such a scarcity mindset with like money and just like everything i was just like in panic mode but i'm like you know what we're going to make this happen. We're going to do this. And I knew first off investing in ourselves was going to be like the big key. Yeah. And I think the ladies that they had to think twice about investing the money, you know, we've had ladies who had like many investors, they had like several people in their circle, give them money. And then they, she paid them back at, which I love that. Like that's so resourceful already, but you're even more motivated to make that money back sooner because you have these people being like, not only like, Oh, well, is she really going to make it? You know, is she going to be able to do it, but also being like, well, I want my, you know, hundred bucks back or whatever it is that they invested in you. So I have a, a last question for you, a part of it for me. Were we the worst students mindset wise? Were you the worst? Be honest with us. You, we can handle it. No, you weren't the worst students mindset wise, but those first three months were tough. I'm going to say that. Not because you guys were tough to me. I felt really bad that you guys were feeling that way. When the business was growing, you guys were getting sales. And I was like, but it's working. Like something's off that you feel this way. No, you weren't the worst. I'm not going to lie. There was days where I was like, why am I doing this? <laughs> I don't blame you. I rem remember one call in particular. I literally was looking at you like my stone face. Yeah, I'm I sorry. Think at the beginning, we, we let little things. And that's one thing we've like worked on so much this year. But something irrelevant to what we were working on. It would be like one negative comment or one negative thing that didn't change anything. But for some reason, we would circle all of our energy around that. 
but we would have all this momentum going on and that one like person negative comment or whatever would just derail us completely so like, regardless of all of this this is all like salad dressing it's not real the things that we're talking about like when you guys are getting upset okay, what actually matters it's cutting all the rest of the stuff out right? what actually matters is the business running? are they making money is income coming in their pockets okay how can we increase that that's the imagination you kind of want to go through and just refocus yourself on those things and as you're like moving from employee or, or self-employed mindset to business owner mindset that's what you got to remember is nothing really matters except for like you controlling your life and being the one in charge and like being able to create a compelling future for yourself and your family and your friends and your mission and everybody around you. If that says anything, that shows that like anybody who has the determination and the commitment can do this. Like there's nothing special about us. I mean, I could go on and on and say all the special things about Tiana, but I could point them out about any woman who like wanted to have that conversation. So I would like to reinforce that because I think so many women, like you were saying, poor, but like, will look at us and say, well, it's so easy for you to say now because of this, but it's just not, that's not how it starts out. You don't make these moves because you're in a position to afford it and to have the opportunity easily, easily come to you. I mean, sure that happens to some people, but I promise you that's not our story. And it's not most of the ladies that are in our program too. So it's possible for everybody to make that happen with the right mindset. Thank you for tuning in and listening to the Mother Together podcast. If you want to hang out with us in real life, join our Facebook group, Mother Together. Go to Facebook, search Mother Together in groups, click join, and make sure to answer those questions. See you in the group. group.